Hello everyone. Today we are going to learn transient analysis which is very important topic in network analysis. Okay. So now uh, here we can observe a network. Okay. So this is a network and which is connected or excited through a DC voltage through some switch. Okay. So let us say this voltage source is connected for a long time. And the network has attained a steady state condition um, and uh, the voltage and current in the network let us say uh, as V1 and I1. Clear. So now what happens uh, if we suddenly remove this voltage source. Okay. If we suddenly remove this voltage source then the network will attain a new values of voltage and current and let us assume that voltage and current as V2 and I2. Okay. So, but to reach this new values V2, I2. Okay. So, to reach this new values V2, I2, the network will take some time. Okay. So, the network will take some time. So, this time is known as transient time or transient period of time. So, this transient period of time is of uh, very few microseconds up to few milliseconds okay so this is about transient analysis and why we need to study this transient analysis because we need to understand the network whenever some disturbance has occurred for a few seconds it has to get back to its original state whether the system has reached it uh, reached its uh, study state or not so what happened in that transient period of time with the network so that analysis very is very important to understand. So that's why transient analysis is very important. Okay. Now before uh, getting into the uh, exact analysis of uh, transients, we need to understand the behavior of elements. So basically we are having three types of elements, resistor, inductor and capacitor. So let us see how the element will behave immediately after the excitation and uh, when it reaches to its steady state so this table is very important okay so let us start with the first element resistor so this resistor will not having any kind of effect over the transient state whether it may be immediately after the excitation or at the steady state so it will be the same okay so no need to remember anything it's very easy so next element is inductor so what is the property of inductor? Inductor does not allow sudden changes in current. So in this case the inductor was initially uncharged. So the current is zero. So what will happen when uh, uh, it was excited immediately? Okay so uh, the behavior immediately after the excitation will be it is it, it won't allow the current. So that's why it behaves like a open circuit. Okay, so for a long time, that means uh, as t tends to infinity, the inductor will allow the current. So then it will behave like a short circuit. Clear? In this case, inductor is not having any kind of internal or initial current. Clear? Now, if the inductor is having some initial current I O, then how the behavior will be? changing so simply it will carry the same old initial current immediately after the excitation okay so under steady state it will behave like this okay so short circuit in parallel with your initial current okay so these things are very important in this analysis okay so next element is a capacitor so Capacitor, what is the property of capacitor? Capacitor does not allow sudden changes in voltage. So, which is quite reverse in the case of inductor. When compared to inductor, so the capacitor behavior is quite reverse. So, in the inductor case, okay, so if it behaves like a open circuit, now it will behave like a short circuit. The logic is that capacitor does not allow sudden changes in voltage. That means V equal to 0. If voltage becomes 0, it will be replaced by a short circuit. Clear? So, after some infinite period of time, that means it when it reaches to its steady state, it will 
allow the voltage that means it will behave like a open circuit simple so next uh, in this case okay so initial voltage in the capacitor is no zero so that's why it uh, the behavior can be observed on the screen but when the capacitor is having some internal voltage v not okay so then the behavior immediately after the excitation seems to be somewhat like this okay that same initial voltage will be exhibited here because it does not allow sudden changes it is already having some internal voltage no that same internal voltage will exhibit here now for an infinite period of time it will be replaced by open circuit okay with internal voltage Okay, so this table is very important to understand, and this will help you in throughout this transient analysis. Okay, so you have to understand the concept behind this behavior. Okay, now let us discuss DC response of an RL series circuit. Okay, so this is a simple RL series circuit, and uh, here we need to assume that the inductor is initially uncharged. so that means uh, the current through the inductor is zero initial current is zero okay so when switch s is closed then we can get a closed path at that point of time we just apply kvl if we apply so then v equal to ri plus l into da by dt where this ri is voltage drop across the resistor l da by dt is the voltage drop across the inductor so uh, this equation can be simplified by dividing this entire equation with l so if we divide so we'll be getting this second equation so here i is a solution and v is the applied voltage of course and treat that as a constant value so when switch s is closed this equation is a uh, is a kind of linear differential equation of first order now let us compare this equation with a non homogeneous differential equation okay so this is a non different non homogeneous differential equation whose solution is this one now we just compare this uh, non homogeneous differential equation with our previous equation so this is our previous equation as you can see so this is di by dt plus r by l into i is equal to v by l you just compare this equation with this one there is non homogeneous differential equation so if you compare so so i is x uh, r by l is p and v by l is k so this is the solution so instead of x what you can write you can write i instead of p r by l instead of k v by l you may write if you do so you will be getting the equation like this okay so this equation can be even simplified so what you do you just write this part so c into e power minus r by l into t so keep that as a first term okay so keep the second term so e power minus r by l into t as it is okay so here v by l is a constant value so make outside the integral okay so there you get this v by l now uh, what is the part left over there uh, inside the integral so e power r by l into t so e power xt what is the formula e power xt by x so use the same formula you will be getting the other part okay so this is uh, the way you need to apply the solution and later this can be even more solved so here l gets cancelled no so what is the left over v by r so this is the expression so c into e power minus r by l into t plus v by r so is this the complete solution for current i because c is not having any kind of expression we need to find okay so in order to get the value of c we need we are going to apply the initial conditions so here we are having three conditions first one at t equal to 0 second one at t equal to 0 minus third one at t equal to zero means what do you mean by t equal to zero at the time of closing the switch t equal to zero minus means just before closing the switch condition t equal to zero plus means just after closing the switch condition so in our example the inductor is initially uncharged that means before closing the switch what is the current zero 
okay so at t equal to 0 minus that is just before closing the switch is 0 now at the time of closing the switch what is happening because inductor does not allow sudden changes in current still if we close the switch also the current through the inductor is zero and also t equal to zero plus means what just after closing the switch that means the current remains zero you need to understand these three points okay now what we are doing we are choosing this first condition that is at t equal to zero so what happened at t equal to zero current i is equal to zero you just substitute this condition here in this equation okay if you do so um, instead of i what you can write zero c as it is e power minus r by l into t in the, instead of t what you can write zero plus v by r is a same part so from this equation we can find the expression for c now we can get the complete solution how you can get the complete solution like this okay so from this equation this is i know so i is equal to instead of c what you can write so here minus is there i forgot to write that minus keep minus so minus v by r okay that is c into e power minus r by l into t plus v by r okay so take v by r as a common element there you get 1 minus e power minus r by l into Okay, so this is the complete solution current I. Okay, so now uh, this is a plot between uh, I and T. So here uh, you are observing I of T. It doesn't make any difference. Uh, it, it signifies it's a function of T. Okay, so we are uh, writing this current equation in time domain only. Okay, so how you got this plot? How you got this plot uh, if you don't understand you just substitute uh, the time t as a time uh, and if you are going to substitute the time t you need to understand the concept uh, what is that concept um, the time constant okay so uh, in uh, let us see this equation okay so this is the current equation no so this v by r this part is a steady state part and v by r into e power minus r by lt is a transient part okay so here the transient period is defined as a time taken for the current to reach its final value or steady state value from its initial value clear so that was explained in the first slide itself in the transient part of solution that is v by r into e power minus r by l into t so in the transient part of solution the quantity L by R is very important in describing the curve. So, since L by R is the time required for the current to reach from its initial value, that is 0, to final value V by R. So, this L by R is called the time constant and is denoted by tau, measured in seconds. Okay. So, uh, let us... Uh, um, discuss in a mathematical point of view so how you got that expression and all okay so at t equal to tau okay so uh, what is tau l by r okay so from this expression let me erase this line okay right so from this equation substitute t as tau okay so v by r this entire part will be same no so here only you concentrate on this part okay so that to on power so in power what you are having minus r by l right so this is minus r by l so what is uh, t now you are supposed to uh, substitute tau right so what is tau tau is l by r so substitute l by r now what you are getting so you are getting simply one right so you can observe the same here remaining every part will be same okay so if you solve that is 1 minus e power minus 1 there you get the value 0.6321 and v by r uh, will be same right similarly you substitute for 2 tau substitute for 3 tau 4 tau and 5 tau okay so um, what you understand from this pattern 
okay the current increases exponentially with respect to time now from the curve you can observe the rising current produces rising flux which induces emf in the coil according to lenz law the self induced emf opposes the flow of current right so because of this induced emf and its opposition the current in the coil do not reach its final or maximum value instantaneously it will take some time so at point p you can observe okay so at point p it will uh, denotes what uh, the current in the circuit raises to it raises to what value 0.632 times maximum value of the current in the steady state so uh, in here also we can define the time constant okay the time required for the current to rise to 0.632 of its final value is known as time constant and is given by rl okay the time constant will be denoted by tau okay right so once you got the current expression you can find the voltage drop across the resistor so what is voltage drop across the resistor ri so i can be replaced by v by r into 1 minus e power minus r by l into t there you get the expression for voltage drop across the inductor okay now similarly you can find the voltage drop across the inductor also okay so that is l into da by dt simply <clears throat> replace that i with this expression so you get the voltage drop across the inductor so once you got the voltage drop across the resistor and inductor you can also find the power dissipations across the resistor and inductor also okay so in this way we can find the transient behavior of the circuit okay and which is very important to understand okay so i hope you understand if you are having any doubts just tell me i'll clarify thank you